Aries full moon, fiery lunar eclipse. Now, I did miss doing the Libra new moon podcast. However, if you go to the October horoscopes, I go into detail for all 12 signs what the Libra new moon means for you as well as what this Aries full moon means for you personally. So when I do the Aries full moon or the Libra new moon and then after this Aries full moon I'm going to do the Scorpio solar eclipse. This is an overview that I'm doing which applies to all of us because we all have Aries somewhere, we all have Libra somewhere, we all have Scorpio somewhere in our needle chart. So these bigger events that are happening are affecting you personally. And when I do the monthlies, that's my opportunity to go in and talk about what it means for you personally. That's why you want to know what your sun sign is and you definitely want to know what your rising sign is. It really is empowering to know your astrology because knowledge is power. There's nothing more fascinating than knowing self. Who am I? What am I? What drives me? What is my life purpose? What is my mission? Why am I here? Astrology can help you answer these questions. If you go to my website, I publish bi-monthly. And in my bi-monthly blog reports, I cover the entire month of astrological events. And there's so much happening. The Libra New Moon on October 4th was the most intense, powerful new moon of the year. And that's because it had four squares and two oppositions coming from powerful Pluto and unpredictable Uranus and Jupiter, which expands everything it touches, was activating the sun in Libra and the moon in Libra, calling dramatic change for all of us and growth. So go into the October horoscopes and you can learn about how that applies for you specifically. So we're coming from the Libra new moon that took place on October 4th and its ruling planet Venus entered Sagittarius on October 7th. Mars, which is also a major player because Mars rules Aries and Aries, the Aries full moon is happening on October 18th and this is a fiery lunar eclipse. Mars has moved into Virgo on October 15th and so we're building towards this Aries lunar eclipse on October 18th and of course the exact Pluto Uranus perfect square on November 1st. So October is a game changer for all of us. October is powerful. Libra is about relationships. All of life is relationship. You're having a relationship to self. You're having a relationship to creator. You're having a relationship to your spouse or partner. You're having a relationship to your work. You're having a relationship to your astrology. You're having a relationship to your money. You're having a relationship to your health. You're having a relationship to your environment on and on and on the circles of life go out and you are having a relationship with everything that's why control is an illusion we really can't control anything what we're doing is having a relationship with our partner we're having a relationship with our children we're having a relationship with our work and with libra it's time to look at those relationships and see what's working for you and what isn't. If something's working for you, it's going to get stronger. It's going to grow. It'll advance you. If something's not working, it will break down. Pluto and Uranus are breaking down the illusions, what's obsolete, what's outworn, what no longer works for us. So it begins to break down. And that's our opportunity to step back and go, okay, What do I really need here? What do I really want in this energy? What do I want to see happen in the next three months, six months, year? Okay. New moons are always beginnings. Full moons can bring beginnings, but they are predominantly about completions. Full moons bring situations to a climax, to a head so that we can address it. 
and make changes. And that can put us on a new life path, which is a new beginning. So when something ends, something begins. It's the circle of life. And astrology represents the wheel of life. The 12 houses, the 12 signs, the 12 constellations are the areas of life that are being activated, that are being accentuated, that are being dramatically addressed so that you can look at these areas of your life, if it's health, if it's finances, if it's relationship, if it's work, and make changes. Embrace change. Change is your friend. So we've got the Aries full moon, which is a fiery lunar eclipse happening on October 18th. Eclipses are the most intense transit you can experience. Their effects last in our life anywhere from six months to two years. So on the day of the eclipse isn't necessarily when the events will take place. It can happen on that day, it can happen before, it can happen after, but it can, yeah, it can take place anywhere from six months to two years after. That's how powerful these eclipses are. Now, Aries is the first sign. I love Aries because in astrology, it's our new year. I kind of have three new years. I use All Hallows Eve as one of my new years. Then, of course, the traditional January 1st, December 31st is one of my new years. And then first day of spring when the sun goes into Aries, bam, we're in a new astrological year. So Aries represents new beginnings, the uprising of life, the plants growing up from the ground and blooming, right? Life pushing through the earth. It's new beginnings, new starts. But it is a full moon, which is um, bringing not only new beginnings, but completions. So this is a wonderful energy. Um, I really like this Aries lunar eclipse. Pluto and Uranus are not aspecting it. Jupiter is T-squaring it. So with Aries, it's about cultivating your selfhood, nourishing who you are, why you're here and what you're doing, what you're about. If we don't love self, we have nothing to give to others right? So it's never about going outside to get our needs met. It's always about going inside, loving ourselves, taking care of ourselves. And from that place of self-love, then we are available to others. And we're really giving them something powerful and authentic because we're loving self. We're loving self. We're taking care of self. And that's what Aries is here to teach us is Aries is the I am, my mighty I am presence. That's your God self, your higher power that never descends into the physical. It's always in the etheric. It's always with God. It's always perfect. It is your higher power that you want to pull into this physical vessel and move from. You want to move from your higher power. So full moons are polarizations. We've got the sun in Libra and the full moon in Aries. So Aries is over on one side singing, it's all about me. Aries loves to sing and dance. It's all about me. It's all about me. And the Libra sun, meanwhile, back at the ranch, the Libra sun is frustrated. No, Aries, it's not all about you. It's about us. What are we doing? Where are we going? Whom do you love, Aries? The sun in Libra wants to know. But the Aries moon just can't help belting out a few lines from his favorite song. I've got to be me. I've got to be me. What else can I be but what I am? Aries, I am. And Libra has a melody of her own she's singing at this full moon. It's my karma and I'll cry if I want to, cry if I want to. You would cry too if it happened to you. <laughs> so you get the idea. We have Aries over there all happy being who he is. And then we have Libra on the other side going, wait a minute, we're in relationship. And you have to pay attention to me because it's not just about you, it's about us. And this is true. We want to find the balance in these polar opposites. Now, Jupiter's not helping our star-crossed lovers because Jupiter is squaring both of them. And Jupiter expands whatever it touches. So it's exaggerating us. It may exaggerate your emotions. It may exaggerate how you're feeling. 
And so, you know, balance is the key for everything. You know, and Buddha taught us this, you know, the middle way, you know. So it's not about being so self-absorbed you don't see your partner, but it's not about being so focused on your partner that you're not taking care of your needs. This is really important with this energy. Balance is the key. We don't want to go to one extreme or the other where we are just totally focused on self that we don't have empathy for the people in our life. Yet we don't want to be so self-absorbed on other people that we're neglecting our own needs and what we need for our selfhood. You cannot ascend unless you're selfish. Now there's a distinction between selfishness and narcissism. Selfishness means I put my soul first. I put God first. I do God's will. I am. That's, that's the I am. But you have empathy for others. So it's not just that you're not only putting yourself first, you do feel other people. Okay? Narcissism is where we are totally involved in ourselves and everyone is an object in our life that is here to serve us. We don't see them as real people. We don't see them as re with real needs. We don't have empathy for them. Narcissism has no empathy. Narcissism only wants you when you're serving the ego. And when you don't serve the ego and you tell the emperor he has no clothes, they get rid of you. They eliminate you. You become no longer useful to the narcissist. Big distinction. Selfishness is good. You can't ascend unless you're selfish. Narcissism, not good. Because you're not only coming from this, you know, and I could do a whole other video on it, but there's some great videos already on YouTube that cover uh, what this, th this disease is. Um, so mastering the Aries eclipse, you want to be balanced in your male and female energies, right? And that's what this Aries lunar eclipse is asking of you. Get balanced in your male and female energies. And the, the male energy is the action. It's the Mars in your chart. It's your get up and go. It's the part of me that got me out here to do the podcast. So you have to have a strong Mars or you don't get anything done. And yet you also have to be receptive. And in other words, you have to be, have the ability to receive, which is the feminine aspect, which is the, the, um, the, the female energies to, to say thank you for that compliment. Thank you for helping me. It's where you're allowing others to give to you. You can't just be out there pushing, being aggressive, hunting, being the knight on the horse, conquering and achieving. You have to also be um, taking care of the home, taking care of your body, taking care of your life, receiving help from others, receiving the love, receiving what you need. The universe works in a figure eight flow, giving and receiving, giving and receiving. So you want to be uh, using the Aries lunar eclipse to balance your life where you're out doing what you're here to do, but you're also taking care of yourself, where you're giving love to others, but you're also receiving love from others. And that is a powerful message at the Aries lunar eclipse. Now, Mercury goes retrograde October 21st through November 10th. The link is below. You can go to my website and learn all about how to navigate Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, which is going deep. When it's about Scorpio, we're going deep. We're embracing the shadow side, and I'm going to talk a lot about that in the November horoscopes that'll be out next week, and um, when I do the uh, Scorpio solar eclipse, which is following this eclipse. Eclipses come in pairs, and so these are the last eclipses of the year. This is the last Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. Go deep. Read between the lines. Don't listen to just what people are saying. Listen to what they're not saying, okay? Really use your intuitive muscle. Really use your psychic abilities to understand what's really going on. Because with all of these crazy energies, and now we, we're at the eclipses, and we just came from that powerful, intense Libra new moon, there's so much happening for all of us. And to understand what's really going on, you have to kind of step back and really listen. And when Mercury's retrograde, it is not the time to um, sign a contract. It's not the time to get married. It's not the time to launch a new project or start a new business because it's in reverse. Mercury rules communication. Mercury rules 
um, the area of life that has to do with speaking, writing, teaching, contracts, travel, the internet, it, it's a huge area. And so when it's retrograde, it's, it's moving in reverse. We're all subconscious. So we're not even fully conscious of what we're doing. And so it's, it's just not a good time if you can help it. Now, life goes on. And if you're in sales and you're selling something, go ahead, sell it, seal the deal. It's really for the buyer to beware more so than the seller. Um, but life has to go on. If you have to buy something, buy it. If you have to do something, do it. Um, if you don't mind changing it later, so if you take a job on the Mercury retrograde, you'll change it later. Um, and so, so, but it's really good to wait till I say November 12th is going to be the green light. I really go into that in the November uh, horoscopes. But November 12th on, there's a green light before Venus goes retrograde on December 21st on solstice. And um, so we got this window where it's a good time to launch a product, start a business, get married, buy a house, buy a car, do the things that we have to do to live and be successful. So if you can wait when Mercury's retrograde, you're going to learn a lot of things. Now, what's Mercury retrograde good for? Mercury retrograde is great for reworking projects, research, uh, strategizing, building a website. It's not the time to launch, but it's the time to build. It's the time to work behind the scenes. Go back to a friend that you need to catch up with. Go back and work on old projects you didn't have time for. That's what Mercury retrograde's good, you see? So it's time to go back and revisit the past. It's time to go back and reflect. It's time to go back and reevaluate things. Then the sun enters Scorpio on October 23rd. Now we're going into the deeper part. We move from Libra relationships into the mystery of life death, rebirth, power, and control, the control of our own mind. And so we're, we're moving into the deeper part of life when we move into Scorpio. This is where we play for keeps. This is where we really want to know, are you in it? Are you with me? Are you really with me? We're going to find out in Scorpio. And then for those that celebrate, we have All Hallows' Eve on Happy Halloween. And we have All Saints Day following on the 1st of November, where we come to the exact Pluto-Uranus perfected square, which is all about change and growth. So the more you embrace change, the more you're going to find things just coming together for you. Remember to create from love, not fear. Your power is in your love, not fear. Fear is the ego. When we stay present, when we stay in the here and now, I'm here today, you find that there's no fear. It's when you project yourself out into the future that you get scared. And that's because you're not there yet. And you don't have your full self there yet. So don't go there. Don't worry about the future. Stay here now. All power is in the now. All power. Your future is determined by the decisions you make today. Your power is here and now. And so you want to be balancing your energies at the Aries full moon lunar eclipse. You want to be balancing your life, doing what's right for you, taking care of you, receiving, allowing the love to come into your life. Be passionate, be heart-centered, liberate your mind. This is real freedom when we liberate our mind. Keep your eye on the ball. The ball is you. And until next time, don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. All are one. <laughs>